Welcome. Welcome to finding your prince. You excited to find your prince? Yeah, awesome. We're going to get into it very shortly, but I just want to say, first of all, welcome. Welcome here to this moment. And I want to applaud you and honor you and thank you for giving me this opportunity to share with you how men work, right? How to understand what the hell we do, you know, why we do the crazy stuff that we do. And I want to honor you for giving me a piece of your time because money, you can go out and make more money, right? But time, time is the resource that you never get back. And I want to thank you and I want to promise you that I'm here to serve you. I'm here to give you as much as I possibly can in the time that we have together. So coming along to this means that you're a searcher, means that you're somebody looking for a new way of being because maybe the stuff that you have been doing hasn't been working exactly how you wanted it to go. And it's such an amazing and beautiful thing that you thought about finding another way, finding a new perspective that's going to give you some value. And during this, there are going to be things that you may not agree with and things that you do agree with. But what I do ask is that you look at it that you might possibly look from another perspective and even just give some of these things a go and just see what happens. You know, take it on, really leap into it. Even if it sounds a little bit different to common knowledge, because it is different to common knowledge, but common knowledge has created the society, the relationships that we currently have, right? And I would love to hear where you're from. You know, put into the comments box in here, where, where are you from? You know, while we get settled in here, wait for the last people to come on board with this webinar. Uh, first of all, put a one in the comments if you can actually hear me, because otherwise I'm just talking to myself. Yeah, cool. Awesome. So where are you from? Put some of that in there. I'd love to see where we've got people from around the world coming on board to this because it's not just where I am currently here in Sydney. I'm a Kiwi from New Zealand and currently over here in Australia really delving into the men's work and understanding how we can shift and create conscious awakened men to allow women to step into their conscious awakened selves as well. Yeah, from Australia. We've got, we got someone in Sydney. Cool. Awesome. Got someone from New Zealand. UK. Yeah, so, yeah, so we've got people from all over the place, right? So what does that tell you about these things that are going on? You know, our understanding of humans in general, but the understanding of the opposite sex can be confusing at the best of times, especially in modern society where we have the roles that are so mixed and all over the place where, you know, you don't need a man at all. So if you don't need a man, why would you have one? All right. And on that note, I'd like to ask you, why did you really come here? What is it that drew you to coming on to this webinar to learn about understanding men and understanding how to communicate with them so that they actually listen to you, right? And understand you. What is it that really brought you here? Just think about that for a moment. Because once you know why you're here, you're going to get a lot more out of this. And just ask a few questions if you would. Write them down, either put them in the comments uh, so I can see them, or write them down just in a notepad in front of you. Just so you've got some questions in your mind and you'll get a lot more out of this by having those questions there in front of you. And one thing I'd like to jump into and just share with you to give you an idea of the way we really think about the opposite sex is men seem to think that women are slightly less hairy, slightly weaker versions of men, right? And I mean this, I don't mean this in a derogatory way. It's just a physical, natural evolution that men have become physically stronger. Yeah? So women kind of think, and correct me if I'm wrong, but women kind of think that men should just be another version of them, a slightly hairier version of them, yeah? 
And when we come from that perspective, we're expecting them to communicate in the same way that we do. We're expecting them to see the world through the same eyes that we see the world. And I mean, how can you expect anybody to see it, right? I'm sure that you've had experiences where you've seen people talk to people and they have such a totally different perspective on the exact same thing that you experienced. So how could you expect your partner to see the world in exactly the same way? How could you expect them to operate and think in the same, same ways and, and utilize the same skills, yeah? But once you understand how men see the world differently, the language that we use, the opportunities that you have to be able to support the men in your life and for them to support you in a way that actually works, would that be exciting? But a hell yes in the comments box if that ex that's exciting. Now, something I'd love too is if this became a conversation because I don't want to just be sitting here talking to a camera. I want to be talking to you beautiful, amazing humans. You know, you have come along and honored me with your time. And I want to have this as a conversation between us where when I'm asking questions of you to really answer them, you know, write it down, put it in the chat box, say it out loud is even better because then you're engaging your physiology as well. And studies show that if you engage in what you were talking about, you'll remember between 90 and 96%. Would that be something cool? Yeah? Would you like to do that? Put it in the comments. Put it in the chat box. And any questions that you do want to ask, write down those questions and I'll get back to them. I may not get to them during this webinar, but I will get back to you. I'll send you a private email with the answers to those questions. So please put them into the comments box and then I can get back to you on those questions. And what it's also doing is it's stimulating your mind, thinking about the things I'm talking about and really creating notes. You know, taking notes is writing down what you hear, creating notes is thinking, how am I going to use this in my life? Where could I utilize this? And asking questions about the statement so that it then channels different energies inside your brain, drives the grooves deeper, and you're going to get a lot more value from it. And also, because you're here, because you've given me this time, because you've taken this time to sit here and be really present with me, to be in this moment, I would love, 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 love to really help you get even more out of this. Would that be okay with you? Would we be able to do a little exercise just really quickly to be able to bring you into this moment so that you're here with me now? Yeah, all right. So we're gonna do three deep breaths. We're gonna breathe in through the nose and out through the mouth. But when we breathe out, just constrict the back of the throat a little bit so that you can hear the energy of the oxygen running in and out of your body. So we're just gonna do three of those now. Just close your eyes down if you would. Yes, please close your eyes down. And we're gonna start. One. Two. Three, and on this final breath, just really bring yourself into this moment. Feel the chair holding you. Just hear my voice guiding you. Feel yourself coming into this moment right here and now. Beautiful. Thank you. And when you're ready, just open your eyes up. Awesome. So I'm Garth Bruin, by the way. You already know that probably because of the ways that you got here through marketing or other channels or whatever it may be, a friend might have told you about it. And I am honored to have you here with me. Truly, truly honored. Now, what is this all about? You know, what is communicating and understanding each other really all about? Is it about hearing what they say? Or is it about understanding who they are on a deeper level? And when you understand who they are on a deeper level, does that then allow you to have a more, a greater experience of a relationship, right? Does that then allow you to have more joy, more connection, more passion in your relationship? Because you understand why they do what they do. Now, when it comes to being able to create a relationship, you really got to know what kind of relationship you want. 
and you've probably written out before the kinds of things you want in a person and the kind of things you don't want in a person, right? I used to do that as well. I used to write out all this big list of things and I'm like, man, did I get everything? Because I get what I always get what I want, you know, I get what I ask for. And so I'd have these women come into my life that met every single thing on that list and I wasn't happy. I wasn't fulfilled with the relationship and we ended up arguing um, and they didn't challenge me mentally, intellectually, uh, spiritually, emotionally, and I wanted to grow. You know, for me, it was about being able to grow in a relationship and I felt like I was growing, but maybe not in the ways that I really felt were going to be a long-term sustainable way of growth, yeah? And so I had a shift in mentality, a shift into what's the experience of a relationship that I really want to have? You know, how do I want to feel when I'm with that person? How do I want to show up with them? What kind of conversations do I want to have? How do I want to experience it? And I'd like you to take a moment and think about that for yourself. You know, think about if it was a year from today and you had the relationship that you really truly wanted and desired in your life, whether you've got one currently and it transformed into that, or if you're searching for that relationship, how would that look to you? How would you feel in that moment? What kinds of things would that person be saying to you to know that it's a great relationship? Just write a few of these down, just on your own notepad there. We'll put them in the chat box if you like, but write down how you'd like to feel, you know, when they hold you and they look at you, when they speak to you, what, what kinds of things are they saying? How are they holding you? How are they looking at you? How are they speaking to you? And once you know a few, just a few of these things, write a few of them down and just feel that you can create that in your life because you can. I'm not saying it's easy. It can be extremely difficult, but there's a lot of simple things you can learn. And I just want you to write next to what kinds of things, who do you need to become to be able to have that person in your life? What kind of woman do you need to be to, for them to have them be that for you? You know, and maybe it's things that you don't know that you don't know yet. Like we're going to share on this webinar, there's going to be a few things here that you don't know that you don't know. And that's exciting because then once you know it, you're going to go, oh my God, and don't beat yourself up on it because you're doing the best with what you have, right? But by learning by growing, by coming to things like this, by getting around different people, by having different experiences, that's what's going to shift it and create that relationship for you. So just write down a few things that you could do, you know, whether it's trying some new courses, trying some new things out, getting around different people, whatever it may be, what is it that's going to be able to create that relationship? Because if it's not happening right now, then it's because you are having you're showing up in that relationship in a particular way and if you're having the same themes running then it's because you're still doing the same stuff and if you're doing the same stuff you are a certain kind of person therefore you'll attract a certain kind of person into your life so to have that person that experience of a relationship that you truly desire is to become the kind of person that's worthy of that and i'm not saying you're not worthy of that now but i'm saying that it's becoming more that's when it shifted for me I wrote down the exact experience of a relationship that I truly wanted. And I said, for the first time, I went, I don't care how long this takes, but I am going to have this kind of relationship in my life. This is my standard. This is what I will have. If it takes me five years, 10 years, I do not care, but I will not settle for anything less. And I committed to it. I said, this is the kind of man that I need to become. These are the kinds of things I need to do, the kinds of events, the experiences, the people I need to get around so that my conversations are different with my friends, which then means that I'm looking at relationships in a different way and I'm able to attract into my life the woman of my dreams. And after doing it, after doing that exercise, I was like, oh, sweet. I was like, cool. If it takes me five, 10 years, I'm happy with that. That's, that's fine. And she showed up within the next six months. The woman of my dreams. And I feel blessed and honored to be sharing time, love, and energy with her. 
and right now we're still deciding as we as we speak we're still working on building this relationship from a place of no expectation so we're not actually together officially but we're building this amazing relationship this friendship this understanding of who each other are and really coming from that place understanding each other's values dreams where we want to go in life, how we show up in adversity. And it's beautiful. It's not easy. It's challenging. It's all hell to really reflect and look at, look at ourselves. And for me, look at myself and to see where I'm not coming through on it, not coming through on my promises and really showing up. But I got to say, it's worth it. I have never been feeling so in bliss because it's not from a place of endorphins, you know, we're still not having sex. And that's because it's coming from a place of not wanting the endorphins running our relationship because endorphins wear off, but understanding who someone is doesn't, right? This is just my personal, my personal journey. I haven't, I don't recommend or disrecommend or whatever to doing something like this. I mean, I chose to do a year of abstinence to shift and change uh, how I was showing up. And that's continued on and I'm enjoying learning how to really be with me, enjoy my company. And as I enjoy my company, I'm then able to share myself with someone else rather than putting my expectation that they are there to make me happy, right? Because that's, that's what we see a lot. You know, I need somebody else in my life to make me happy. No, it's bringing in who you are as a happy person and then together, two happy people coming together, man, what a relationship. But if you're trying to constantly get from each other happiness, then where does that lead? Where does that go to? Now, this is just general things about relationship. And I know that you want to get into the real specifics around understanding men. And I'm about to jump into that. But I just wanted to pre-frame the whole thing where it's thinking about the kind of relationship you want. Because once you have that direction once you understand where you're heading with it then you can create it then you can go out and do the things and you know why you're doing the things you're doing because the reasons are so important i mean if you're just trying to do it just so that you can have better communication yeah that's cool that might drive you for a little while but when you have a standard and said i will not settle for anything less than this relationship when things are hard and difficult you'll keep pushing through because it's not easy understanding the other energy you know the masculine the feminine the male the female uh, and for me i live my a lot of my life in my feminine i have a very strong feminine energy you might not see it now but that's because i really now understand what the masculine is to me and step into that and own that hold that space whilst also understanding my feminine energies so yeah just talking about this really takes me into that place of bliss of being so blessed and happy that I was able to create this in my life you know and, and attract this and to become the kind of man worthy of a woman like that it, it every day it just blows me away now getting into a little bit of the nitty-gritty stuff when you come home and your man is sitting there watching TV and you try to talk to him and he turns away. Oh, he's watching the TV, right? So he doesn't turn away from the TV, but he stays locked on the TV and you're trying to talk to him and he's not listening. How does that make you feel? Like crap, right? Like absolute crap. But why do you expect him in that moment to then shift his focus and to listen to you? Is it because if it was your girlfriend, she'd be watching TV and then you'd come in, you'd go to have a chat, she'd be talking to you and watching the TV at the same time. She'd be multitasking, it'd be sweet as, it'd be fine, right? Whereas the masculine energy is about singular focus, being focused on one thing at a time. We have this mentality, this mind kind of like box boxes, right? We have the rugby box, we have the partner box, we have the kids box, we have the work box, and then we have this little box called the nothing box. And that's frustrating, right? The feminine hates the nothing box 
because it's not possible for the feminine, right? You're always thinking about something. There's always something pulling your attention somewhere, somewhere all the time. So for him to be thinking about nothing, how could that be possible? And so when the masculine's in one of those boxes, when he's in the TV box and sitting watching the TV, he's in the TV box. He's not in the partner box. And so if you wanted to come into the partner box, you've got to realize that the TV box has his attention right now. And if you can come in and ask him, when would be a good time for us to talk? Like, can we talk after you finish your show? Like, when, when can we talk about something? Like, have a chat and just talk about a day and everything else. Then he will turn, hopefully, and say to you, yeah, cool. Oh, yeah, when I finish this, I'd love to come and give you my presence. Because the mask is very much about wanting to give you presence. But truly, it is but it's at the time that he's able to do it, you know, and that's what this is about is not necessarily going, oh, now I completely understand everything that they do, but understanding why they do what they do so that you can then be able to accept that and create that relationship do you want, that you want. Are you up for that? Yeah. You engaged still, you still paying attention, right? And put, is it, if this is valuable to you already, then put a hell yes in the comments box there. Yeah, cool. All right. So we keep going down this track. All right. So the masculine brain, the masculine brain is focused on one thing at a time, right? It's focused on I'm here at work. So work is work, home is home. And I can switch. And when I need to change, I need to come through them. And that's, we'll talk about transition time at another point. But when singular focused on one thing, when he's there with you, he will be there with you. The feminine brain is diffuse awareness or crazy awareness, which is thinking about everything all the time. You know, when you're doing the dishes, you're thinking about the kids' lunches, you're thinking about what Becky said yesterday, you're thinking about what you've got to do at work, you're thinking about the bills, you're thinking about the washing, you're thinking about whatever it may be, right? Um, and please don't be offended by the generalizations of those specific things. But when you're doing one thing, you're thinking about everything else, yeah? And so the feminine brain is trying to do all things all the time. So I'm doing this one thing over here, but I gotta get that done too. So I'm doing that too, and I gotta do that too, and I gotta do that too. And it goes to the point where it's like, how do you get anything done? But as time goes on, you do a little bit here, a little bit there, and over time, all these little things come together, and then you've got everything done, but then you need all these new things that need to be done as well. So you've got always got things that are on your mind, and you need to get them done. Whereas the masculine brain, is, oh, I've got to do the dishes. All right, I'll do the dishes. Then after the dishes, all right, I've got to, you know, go and mow the lawns. So I'm there mowing the lawns. And then I need to sit down and have dinner. All right, I'm sitting there having dinner. I'm not thinking about all the other stuff. I'm thinking about this thing in front of me. And so being able to understand that his focus is in one place at one time is then being able to assist him in all the other things like one of the biggest gifts you can give a man right is to not expect him to remember your birthday you know like oh my god but he should because it means that he cares yes i get you i feel you but his focus is focused so deeply on what he's doing and the task that he's at the time of life that he's at what he's doing right there that he just it just doesn't cross his mind you know because he's focused where he's at. He really wants to give you something amazing, give you an amazing experience. So what you can do is if you want something for your birthday, ask for it, then remind him about it. You know, a week before your birthday, just go, oh man, I can't wait. I'm so excited. It's my birthday next week. It's so cool. And then be like, oh yeah, it's her birthday. That's right. I need to get that sorted. And then three days before, go, oh yeah, it's just a couple of days till my birthday. I'm so excited. And he'll be like, oh yeah, cool. Yeah, that's right. It's her birthday. Yep. All right. I'm going to get something. I've got to get those last things done. Cool. Organizing something. And then on the night before, I'll go again. <sighs> so excited that it's my birthday tomorrow. And then on your birthday morning, wake up and go, oh, babe, it's my birthday. And he'll go, oh my God, it's your birthday. You know? It's, you may think he should remember. Why? Why should, you know, if you create that expectation, you're creating a space for disappointment. But if you give him the gift of reminding him 
every moment, then you're giving him the opportunity to provide for you. You're giving him the opportunity to feel like a man because it's nothing worse. I know the feeling because I'm shocking at remembering birthdays. I hardly, I don't even remember my own niece and nephew's birthdays sometimes, you know? I don't remember them coming up and I'm like, oh, is it their birthday? I've got to find out. And then I'm like in the rush to get things sorted for it. So it's such a kindness when somebody's like, oh, it's my birthday coming up. I'm so excited for it. And I'm like, oh, yeah, cool. Well, thank God for Facebook. It helps me out heaps with that because it goes, oh, it's this person's birthday. Oh, yeah, it's, this person. it's my dad's birthday coming up. This is awesome. And so now I, I used to get annoyed with myself because like, I should remember. I care about these people so much. I should remember it. I should remember it. But I wasn't able to remember it. I wasn't able to, like, it just, it just doesn't stay in there. Like, it's not relevant right now, so why is it relevant? But if it pops up and it's like, oh, it's a week till this person's birthday, I'm like, all right, cool. Yes, now this is relevant right now. I can get something sorted. And this comes to another point, which I will get to a bit later. Remind me later on, but I'll get to it, which is called urgent and important. And this is a way of living for a man, urgent and important. So remind me about that because I want to get to that during this. But to be able to remember, you know, to remember those things because it's like the masculine is I'm here doing this task, getting this done, and it's going to create this, which is going to provide this for myself, for my family, whatever it may be. And so when I'm here doing this, I'm not thinking about all the other things that are going on. And it's infuriating sometimes. Thank Thankfully now, I really understand that it's just not how the masculine brain operates and I'm able to accept it within myself because I used to get so frustrated about it, you know, and I would step into my, deep into my feminine energy, but then I'd be thinking about everything all the time, trying to get everything done and feeling so uncomfortable because it's not my core, it's not where I really feel comfortable. I felt disempowered, then I felt overwhelmed, I felt like yeah, fully overwhelmed because the feminine is thinking about everything all the time and then i'm like trying to do one thing but i can't because i'm doing everything and so <laughs> i wouldn't get anything done i get overwhelmed and then i'd, I'd go and lie down and go what is going on i have no idea uh, but then coming back and the way that i have learned to get things done as a man is to come in and go all right this is one thing that needs to be done just do this one thing single focus Boom. All right. Do it. Cool. Done. And then move to the next thing. One thing. Do this. Done. And if I'm going to shift to something else, then I need to transition to that. Like for a man, this is going to transition time, right? So I'm, I've been working all day. I'm singular focused. I'm at work. I'm making things happen. I'm doing deals. I'm helping people. I'm serving people's lives. I'm like in that space and it's all go. There's a lot of high energy. Just da -da 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 -da. We're going for it. And then I come home. I don't want to bring that same energy home, right? Because I'm thinking about all the things I got to do with with the business or where we're going, what we're creating, how I'm impacting people, how the, that came across in the day. And then when I get home, I've got to transition into being present with the people that I'm with and being present for my lady and being present for my friends and my family, being present with myself and not thinking about work. So to do that, I've got to do a thing called transition time. So a transition routine might be five minutes, it might be half an hour for some men, it's an hour. And this generally shows up, you know, when a man comes home from work and he sits down and he watches the TV. He doesn't want to talk to anyone, he just wants to sit down and just watch the TV. And if you interrupt him, he gets angry, grumpy, and aggravated, right? And it's about giving him the gift of that transition time. When he comes in, acknowledging them, him that he's home, just going, hey, babe. And then leave him to it. Let him go and have that transition time. And once he's transitioned from work into home mode, he can then have his full attention there. And is that not an exciting thing? To be able to have his full attention there and he's not going to be snapping and arguing and biting so much because he's actually there with you, not trying to think about other things. And then when you come in and try and speak with him, you're taking away his capacity to think about the one thing that he's focused on right now. Yeah, does that make sense? Now, <clears throat> my transition time is coming home and I'll do a five, 10 minute meditation, you know, or I'll do some breath work. It's just sitting down just 
going over my day being a, and being thankful for the things that I've done, the things that have really taking in the points that have been really impactful for me for the day. And then going, ah, oh, it's been such an amazing day. And then I'm able to shift my focus into where I am here and now. Because otherwise, my brain is constantly trying to pull out little pieces and I start to drop into my feminine energy because I'm trying to be two places at once and I can't be there. It doesn't work for me. I, it just, it's uncomfortable and I don't, do not enjoy it. And it's, it's not where I'm able to show up as the best version of me. I don't feel like the best version of me when I show up like that. And you may need it as a woman. You may need that transition time yourself because especially if you're in a masculine environment, especially corporate environment, geez, uh, you're in there and you're going full on, you know, you're doing that masculine energy, that direct, that focus, that boom, get things done. We're in that space. We're making things happen. And then you come home and you're still in that space and you're like, yes, let's make things happen. Boom, 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 boom. And I don't know if you've found it or felt it with the energy at home, a man or masculine will drop into the feminine to be able to balance that out. Because it's all about the duality, right? It's all about the yin and the yang. It's all about having both the masculine and the feminine energies. One is gonna be one or the other. And I'm not saying that it's wrong to be in the opposite side. I'm just saying that understanding both and deciding where you feel most comfortable, where you enjoy being the most, where you feel the most yourself, being able to understand what those differences are so that you can decide to step into the energy that you want. And if that's what you want, then to create a space for your partner to step into the energy that they are most comfortable in so that you can be there in this amazing polarity of masculine and feminine that just draws together and is exciting. When you have that polarity that breaks apart and you have the masculine drop into the feminine, the feminine drop into the masculine, it's not where either are comfortable and the polarities are reversed and you're pushing away from each other rather than pulling towards each other. And so being able to see that and shift into that beautiful flowing feminine space where you're able to just be, be creative, be loving, be nurturing, be whatever it is that is feminine for you to step into that and own that. You know, you, the feminine is so strong stronger than any masculine energy. So I don't know why the woman want to be into this masculine space and because it's like, that's, that's uh, say physical strength, you know? It's like, oh, I'm strong. But the strength of the feminine comes in being able to nurture everyone every moment and think about everyone and do all these amazing, I'm so jealous of the way that the women around me and in my life are able to think about all these people and everything that's going on. They remember all the details and I'm like, man, that's so cool. You're thinking about all these people all the time. And so when you see this thing, you go and pick it up and you do all these kind and beautiful gestures for other people. The masculine's like, nope, I'm here focused on this. And therefore we're not thinking about everyone else all the time. You know, when we're thinking about somebody, we're thinking about them, but when we're not, we're not. And so beyond yeah, bringing that transition time into your life as well so that you can step into that energy that you want to be in, that you feel most comfortable in. Maybe that's a bubble bath. Just doing something that makes you feel really feminine and just transitioning across from that masculine energy into that beautiful space. It's a beautiful gift you can give any man and to just be feminine. You know, that's what we want. We want to be able to be the provider in your life. And this brings me to my next point being the provider, man. I, I was so confused about being a provider. You know, I never used to buy chicks drinks when I was younger or anything like that because I wanted to honor them. Like truly it was a, from a place of, I want to, I see that, you know, women want to be independent in the world. So I want you to feel independent. So I want to come in equally and all that and trying to be equal all the time, me being in my feminine, right? And trying to connect with the feminine as from a feminine space you know great for connecting with feminine friends not so great when you're trying to show up as a man you know because what do you what really makes you feel good a man that comes in and is all floaty and all over the place 
or one that's direct, decisive and owns himself and goes, yes, this is where I'm going, this is what I'm doing, and this is what I'm going to make happen. That's attractive, right? Where he, he, when he turns and holds you, you feel safe in his arms. And this comes from our primal DNA, you know? We're looking for, the man, masculine, is, is looking for admiration. You know, men want to be admired and respected. To be admired, man, what a great feeling when it's like you're being this man and a woman is admiring who you are, a man is admiring who you are. That feels amazing. Feels so good. So when things are said to you, to me, about the way that they that some, a woman admires me that someone admires me i feel like such a man i feel so strong in that space and i feel respected you know men will do anything for gaining that respect for getting that admiration for feeling like a provider because it feels like we're able to keep to to support you we want to care for you we want to look after you but how the hell do you do that in the modern age you know, you don't need us for finances and for food, for the things that were so innately part of what a man was useful for. So what is a man useful for? Think about this in your life right now. I want you to think about what is it that a man provides for you? Like, why would you have one in your life? You know, why do you need a man? Because it's easy to say, I don't need a man. I don't need a man in my life. And we're told that from childhood, right? Women don't need a man and men should be the soft, caring, nurturing, do everything for a woman mindset, right? And yeah, this is a touchy subject, I know. But bear with me. And where this comes from, actually, I'd love to share with you where this comes from, is long story short a big part this is just a brief example of it and take it if you will and if you don't agree with it that's fine too but with single mothership right it is so phenomenal that a woman is now able to decide if she wants to stay with a man or not she's able to divorce she's able to leave she's able to go and look after the kids on her own and she can financially do that as well now it's not easy like my sister is a single mother and i am just so impressed every day by the way she shows up you know she works full-time in child care as a manager and she has her cake business as well she has two beautiful amazing children and she just shows up for them every freaking day you know she doesn't she doesn't have the money to go and do everything that she wants to do all the time but she looks after herself as well, which is amazing, such a new thing for her, but she looks after herself and she shows up every day and she's constantly thinking about work, she's thinking about the business, she's thinking about the kids, she's thinking about everyone else. And she's just phenomenal, she rocks it, she owns it. And it's like, oh my God, this is so amazing. And I'm so thankful that she was able to make that decision because the marriage that she was in uh, was an interesting one. And she has now since taken responsibility for some of the things that maybe she showed up with, the things that I'm sharing with you. Maybe she, she realized that she had a part to play in that as well. Uh, not completely, but she realizes that you know, some parts maybe could have been shifted a little bit. And so, <clears throat> and that comes to cultivating the man in your life that you want. You know, not by coaching, but by supporting, by admiring, by being there and wanting to bring out the best man that he can be you know for you for himself so he can show up as that man now in saying that so absolute love 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 love, love that uh, single mothers honor them respect them truly deeply now when it comes to a single mothership though what do you think and my sister is doesn't say this but what is it that a mother says to her daughter you don't need a man you can look after yourself you show up you do it yourself you don't need no man in your life you don't need him to provide for you anything else because they've had a bad experience with a man and so therefore all men are lumped into this category of being narcissistic assholes <laughs> 
and you show up, step into the masculine energy of be extremely decisive, know what you want, go out, get it, be focused, singular focus, make it happen, show up every day, be determined, courage. And I'm not saying that these aren't qualities of the feminine as well, but the directness, that singular focus is very much the masculine energy, right? And the young boys, what do they tell them? You know, be kind, be caring, be nurturing, understand what they, where they're coming from. And a young boy that's in an environment, say like my nephew, he's got his older sister and my sister and his mother. So he's in, you know, 90% of the time, 95% of the time at home, he's in an environment where he's only got two women. So he only sees that communication style. He doesn't understand how he should, how he can communicate and how the masculine shows up. You know, because he doesn't see it every day. And his father it lives in his feminine space as well a lot. So he is closed off and doesn't really know how to express himself as a man. And in saying that, young, my nephew Travis, he sees that. So that's how he thinks that he should show up as an angry man, you know, screaming, yelling, um, taking, being a taker. And looking for a mother you know he's got his mom and so he's learning without anything being said how to communicate like a woman which is going to be hugely beneficial It's beneficial for me to show up how how to uh, communicate with women on their level is beautiful it's amazing it allows an amazing level of connection and understanding but where does he get the other side from where does he get the show up be a man you know Get into that space of being a provider. What is a provider? Again, what is a provider to you? I hope you're writing this down. Because it's your... If you want... If you want that man in your life, if you want an amazing, passionate, compassionate relationship, then what you need to do is to help him understand what he provides for you. Because he has no idea. He doesn't need to provide food. He doesn't need to provide money, finances. So creating that safe structure, you know, the masculine is the structure. Actually, an architect told me a really great description of this. He says, whenever I do a home, I do the structure of it and I design the very masculine aspects of the house. And then my wife goes through and decorates the inside, which is the feminine, flowing, colorful, beautiful part of it. And so it's very much you know, the homemaker and the guy who goes out and makes the money, right? So that's an old distinction, but it makes it a lot clearer in understanding that the masculine is about the structure. It's about creating the safety. The house is the safe place. It's the place where we're able to be safe and, you know, have our family here and we'll be, we'll be able to survive the winter. And the feminine's about beautifying, making it beautiful, amazing, spectacular. You know, she goes through and puts in all the cushions, the artwork and everything else and he can't think of that but he's got the structure sorted right so then when he's not needed for that when he's not needed to create the structure of the relationship for the feminine to be in that beautiful flowing creative beautification state then what is he there for yeah if he's not there to get the house and all the safety things that are required then what do you need him for if you don't have the answers for it, that's okay. Start to look a little deeper and to really ask when you're with your partner, what is it that they provide for me? You know, my belief is that it's the masculine's role now to be able to provide a beautiful, safe space for the feminine to be able to flow in, to be able to be feminine, you know, in every situation and environment not necessarily it doesn't have it's not financially and everything else before yes that's great too but where that comes from as long as we've got that coming in that's that's cool that's what matters it makes it happen right and as long as i've got enough coming in to be able to cover our basic needs then i'm still creating that safety you know i'm creating that structure creating that uh providing that space and so me now i'm able to show up because i know what i provide I, I choose to know what I provide, to provide me in the masculine space that I am for the feminine to flow. Now the question comes about, how do you get your man to be able to do that? 
How do you get him to be able to come and step in and be that man that you really want? And he's not doing this right and he's not doing that right. Well, you're not going to be able to change him and shift him, right? What you can do, this is when it comes to the prince and the frog concept. Are you kissing the prince and turning him to a frog or the other way around? If you want the prince in your life, maybe, just maybe, think of this for a second, the concept that maybe he's already a prince. And all you have to do is help that prince, let that prince come out. Maybe it's the constant criticism that's emasculating him and causing him to feel like crap. So therefore, he doesn't feel like he, he doesn't, he doesn't feel useful. And the masculine wants to be useful, wants to provide, wants to be useful. So if he feels useless, then he's not going to be able to show up for you and be useful, right? And when, so the feminine, when you're communicating with your girlfriends, you criticize each other, yeah? Not necessarily blatant, like not blatantly bullying them, but when they're wearing a dress and it doesn't look good, it doesn't look good and their, their butt looks big in it, then you sort of criticize them a little bit, tell them, oh, your butt looks bigger than that or whatever. And then that's helping her to understand how she can shift and change, right? Because that's only in that moment. In that moment, she had that thing that was wrong and I helped her to change it. And she's really thankful for it and grateful for it. That's how we grow together as friends because we talk about it, we coach each other. Like, why can't I do that with my man? Because that's not how we work. We work about encouragement, support. If you want us to do something, tell us what you need. If you, you turn to me and you tell me what you need, I'm like, yeah, hell yes, I'm there. But if you turn to me and go, why aren't you doing this? Why aren't you doing that? Why aren't you taking the rubbish out? You never take the rubbish out. I asked you to take the rubbish out. And it's like, well, I forgot about it. I'm sorry. You know, back again to the forgetting about it. It wasn't on my mind. It wasn't urgent. This is where urgent and important comes in. It wasn't urgent and important. So I'm going to do first as a man what's urgent and important to me. Nothing else will come into my awareness except for what's urgent and important. Like eating, right? When a man, when the masculine is hungry, it's like, oh, food, right? Eat now. I need food urgently, importantly. Like, have you ever been cooking dinner and your man's come in and he's just started picking away at something else? He's eating chips or something like that. And you're like, man, dinner's like five freaking minutes away, or half an hour away. Can't he wait? Because his needs are urgent and important. So he needs it right now. The feminine is, will get lost in doing all the things that it needs to do and forget about food. Forget about the, the necessities of things that need to happen, right? Because think about everything all the time. <sighs> Man, so much. So much I want to share and bring out uh, and share with you. <sighs> yeah, so his needs are urgent and important at the same day as well, you know? So when he has a need, he's like, I need this now, you know? And instead of going, no, you can wait for it, blah, 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 is realizing that to him, it's life or death. He needs it urgent. Uh, it's urgent and it's important right now. And so his focus is on what's urgent and important. So if he's got urgent and important, then something needs to become urgent and important for him to be able to do it, right? So with the rubbish bin, if you're saying to him, you know, why don't you take this out? Blah, 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 and you expected him to remember and you left him and you kind of tested him, right? You wanted to see if he'd do what he said he'd do and, and waiting for him to do that, yeah? To take the rubbish out and he didn't take it out. Why don't you just remind him again, giving him the gift of reminding him those things so that he can fulfill your needs because he wants to fulfill them. He wants to be a provider for you, but really sharing with him and honoring him and going and recognizing that he wants to be a provider. He just doesn't know how to. And when you cut him down, I mean, this comes to probably the most important point is please, I implore you, please look at how you emasculate men. And I ask you, and this is a big ask, and I know it's a huge ask, and it's something that's so ingrained in our society. And I'm going to be honest, you'll probably have a lot of women that you won't be able to have conversations with anymore if you should decide to make this commitment. But there are things that I will teach you that are super powerful, the secret language of men, and some other things that you can have a man doing anything that you really need him to do. Showing up as the man, I will teach you those, not in this webinar, 
because these tools can be used for evil. And I've seen it happen. And I will not share them unless you make the commitment to give up emasculating women. I mean, <laughs> emasculating men. You know, I realized that I had to give up the right to objectify women. I realized that that was how I was brought up, was objectifying women in my life. And I gave up that right. I no longer objectify women. And it's, it was difficult. It was so part of who I was. I didn't realize how much I was doing it. But since giving it up, man, how much more do I appreciate women in my life? And when a woman gives up the right to emasculate men, the world can change. That's when it opens up. That's when you have this opportunity to look at it in a new way that they're not just dumb, hairy women. And look at the ways that you emasculate. This is, this is the number one exercise and challenge I'm going to give you. I want you to write this down. For the next seven days, just look at and write down every way that you emasculate a man. Where you're trying to cut him down. When his ego is too big. When he thinks too much of himself. What do you do to cut him down? To bring him back down to size, right? Because it's your right as a woman to cut him down, yeah? And you can continue doing it. That's cool. But if you want a man to show up for you as a man, it's not the way to do it. You know, criticizing him for the things that he does wrong is not going to get him to do the things that you want him to do. The best way that you can get him to do the things you want him to do is when he does something you like, when he does something that's, that's in the direction of what you like, is celebrating it. Give him that instant feedback. Like if he makes a decision and shows up as a man in that moment, give him that cute little look or, you know, that soft flowingness. And you might be like, no, I'm not going to be. I, I, why do they need that? Why should I do that? You don't have to do it. But if you want to have a man that shows up for you, when he shows up, reward him. Men play for points. We love points. Why do you think we watch rugby games and cricket games and all these games? Because it's about points. It's about challenge and about points. We love to challenge ourselves and we love to get points. The masculine responds to challenge except when it comes from the feminine. Because that naturally with the way that we've been, we've been brought up in this generation is we drop into our feminine when we're challenged by the feminine unless we know what our masculine truly is in depth and are able to show up in that space. <sighs> Man, it's a big, big, big part for me to share that with you. Um, I feel inside me like thinking about when, you know, when a woman, when the feminine flows and gives me that feedback and when I step up and I do something and I'm instantly acknowledged for it, I'm like, ooh, and I can see the change in her, and I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm going to do more of that. When it comes to what I've done wrong, oh, you've done this wrong. Well, that's not helping me. It's not helping me come to a solution that's just telling me the problem, right? And yes, we're problem solvers, but we don't understand what you, we, we don't know what you mean, you know? If the feminine wants you to feel what I feel. The masculine wants you to hear what I say. When he comes home and you ask him how his day was and he says, my day was good. You know, hung out with the boys, the men. We went fishing, caught a few fish, stopped at the pub on the way home, had a good laugh. Now I'm here. You're like, he's not speaking to me. And it's because the feminine is, I want you to feel what I feel. So I'm going to tell you all of the things around this that created the environment for me to feel how I feel so that you can understand and understand how I feel about it, right? And Askin's like, I just want you to hear what I say. When I say yes, it means yes. When I say no, it means no. There's no like hidden meaning behind it or nothing else. Like for example, uh, have you ever asked a man out on a date or asked him to lunch or asked him for, to go for a coffee or whatever? And he's turned around to you and he said no. He said, oh, do you want to go out for lunch on Thursday? And he goes, turns around and goes, oh, no. What does that mean? Does that mean 
that he doesn't like you? Does that mean that he's gay? Does that mean he's got a girlfriend? Does that mean, what does it mean? Oh my God, he said no. Just means no. Just means no, right? To no to Thursday. So what could you ask instead? Maybe, how about Saturday? Oh yeah, I could do Saturday. <laughs> or when would you have time? I could have time on this time. Do you want to go out for a date on some day? Yes. All right. Now we got that sorted. When can we get that organized? You know, things like that. Um, I'm so passionate about this. I love it so much. There's so much behind this. <sighs> but really realizing that when he says something, that is exactly what he means. There is no hidden meaning or agenda or nothing else behind it. There's, there's no hidden thing. And the one of the, another gift you can give him is to be direct about it okay all right so going back to diffuse awareness going back to being primal going around and finding you know uh being in the diffuse awareness and being thinking about everything wanting you to feel what i feel and telling everything around it right we're telling the whole the whole thing that i went out with yesterday for breakfast with becky at 10 o'clock at the cafe we talked about this we saw that everything else to the man that's going what the hell is the point of this story there is no point right i want you to understand how i feel he's looking for the point so a gift you can give him realizing that singular focus takes a lot of energy so he can be fully present with you for maybe 10 minutes maybe maybe fully 10 minutes but if you go and sit down and you say hey i got really something really something really important that i need to share it'll take about 10 minutes for me to share it and i'll tell you what's important afterwards he's gonna be like i can do that all right and if you tell him how to listen i need you to be fully here with me present I just need you to listen. I don't want you to solve the problem, but I just need to express and share something with you. And at the end, all I want to hear from you is whatever you want to hear. You must have had a really hard day, or that sounds really tough, or congratulations. You know, tell him what you want him to say. Why not give him the keys so that he can unlock your heart? Like if you want an amazing relationship, why not give him the, the thing? I mean, you want, him, you want him to be able to guess everything. You want him to be able to show up. He should know this. He should know that. He should just know how to do this. He doesn't. I don't. I and mean, I still mess it up. And when I get told what I need from you is this, then I'm like, yes, I can do that. Like specifically, if it's like, I need you to sit here. I need you to listen. I'd be present. I need you to not interrupt or anything else or find the point to it there is no point to it but what is important about it i will tell you at the end of it and give the brief summary of this whole thing and just share that you know don't expect him to be one of your girlfriends He's going to sit there for three hours talking about nothing or everything right because you're connecting the dots you know that it'll loop around later on you'll get there you know everything will, everything matches up over this entire the conversation the feminine talks about an idea and expands on it through talking the masculine goes internal finds the thing he wants to talk about then speaks the piece of it that he wants to talk about it that's what he means everything's about identity for them oh my god i'm going in. there's so much to share there's so much to share and so much depth and i want to give you the absolute most value that i can where we go deep on these things and not just off from one thing to another you know this that's very the the feminine mind says let's talk about all these things and eventually we'll get something out of it but i want to go deep into these subjects with you so you really get the value from this so you really understand each piece because if you do one thing of this if you take away one key distinction from this and use that in your life it's going to transform everything 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 <sighs> i'd like to ask you a question can i can I really give an offer to put an opportunity there for you right now? You know, would you guys like to hear about an opportunity that I've got coming up where we're going heaps deeper on this stuff? Uh, because I want to serve you the best that I can, you know, and I've got a little exercise that I want to give you at the end of this webinar. This is, uh, sorry, a really good little tool that's really going to help you a lot in being able to show up and communicate um, with the men in your life but I'd also like to give an offer of continued learning around this because I do, and would, 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 would you like to hear about it? Yeah, would you like to hear about it? Yeah? 
Would it be valuable to you to, for you to hear about it? Yeah. Yeah, cool. All right. Good enough there. Yeah, awesome. All right. So I will just quickly share with you uh, what it is that I am creating and have created around this space. I'm doing specifically stuff for men, specifically stuff for women, because it's a different way of different information that is really important for you to know, right? So I'm going to do a woman's workshop for four hours. It's about understanding men on an even deeper level, going deep on some of these subjects that we've talked about here. You know, men being the provider, how do they be the provider? Really seeing how a frog, how, how to get the frog into the prince, you know, or just finding the prince and bringing that out of the man that's already there. It's going deep into understanding this communication, the diffuse awareness, the singular focus, understanding the secret language of men. You know, you're going to find out how you can say certain words that compel a man to do what you've asked them to do. And you can use it for children, you can use it for your father, your brother, your husband, your boyfriend, your partner. These, this is the language of men. But I will only take women into this program that have given up the right to emasculate men. And it's a big ask, I know. So I need you to think about it a lot and really decide if you're willing to do that. Spend this next week looking at how you emasculate them and how you cut them down and then really decide, are you willing to give that up? And I'll give more examples of emasculation during it as well. We're going to go deep into what it means and singular focus, diffuse awareness. You know, we're going to go deeper on that and really entwine that with everything else that we're talking about during the program and the different stages of development. Men go through different stages and different parts of their life. You know, from page to night, and then they go into the early prince, prince, late prince, and then into the king stage, and then the wise old, wise old man stage. So there's the different stages, and the un, what you're going to understand with it, so you're going to understand where they're at, and what they can and cannot provide for you at that time. And then understanding how you're able to communicate and get what you need from them in those times that they're in those particular stages of development super valuable super super valuable. that we're going to go really deep onto that so that you can understand where the man in your life is at or also understanding where a man that you're courting you know a man that you think's really interesting you know look at the stage that he's at and decide if that's the stage that you want to be in because they will be in those stages for long periods of time so knowing what you're going to get out of that is super important to see but you'll be able to understand and recognize how they can be there for you when they can be there and supporting them during that so they can support you and your growth and development as well so that's what we're going to go really really deep on during this four-hour workshop i mean is, if, is this something that would be valuable to you if so then chuck a yes in the in the chat box there you know or say it out loud go hell yes garth this is what i want you know if you want to have a relationship like the one you define one that you define at the beginning of this webinar you know really think about for a second now think about that relationship that you envisaged and is what you're doing now is that going to create that and if not then what can you do right now to be able to go towards that and this workshop too i completely forgot but what i should share with you is it's a 600 dollars workshop so 600 bucks for four hours but think about it is that relationship worth 600 dollars to you if you could jump years of trial and error of going round in circles and going why is this happening if you could just get those key little distinctions i mean what have you got from today what are some of the key takeaways you've got today you know, write those down, put them in the chat box for me. I'd love to hear what it is that you've gotten, gotten out of this today. Yeah. And so if this is going to be something that you will find really valuable, because I don't want to be the salesy guy that's going to sell you on everything and, and do any kind of um, anything to try and influence you beyond what is valuable to you. Because I want to serve you 
And if you feel that I can serve you, then please come along. If you feel that you like this relationship would be worth 600 bucks to you, then please come along. It's going to be transformative. I'm super excited to share it with you to go deep into this space because as you can tell there's just so many parts and places we can go with this and I want to share it with you I want to give it all to you um, and I get to do that during this during this finding your prince creating that prince bringing it out yeah and so if this sounds great then I need you to send me an email send me a direct email from however you signed up to this or it's Garth Bruin at into the vault coaching dot com send me an email and say yes garth i want to do the find your prince workshop please i want to do it and if you say that and i'll block you in we'll get into it we'll make it happen um and on the replay of this webinar i may even put a link around so that you can just link through to it and sign up for it because it will be amazing to have you there and to have you on board to share with you to serve you to truly help develop these relationships so thank you thank you for letting me share that now i want to give you one final tool one final tool one final distinction that's really going to transform how you communicate with men and how they communicate with you and how you're going to be able to watch them when you watch a man when he feels like a man if you do something where it's fit where you're going feminine for him or you give him that compliment just watch his chest go up like this he's going to be like oh hell yes i'm a man but just watch for that subtle shift because that's when a man is just feeling like a man and do you want him to feel, if you make him feel like a man, then he can be the man for you that you want him to be, right? Don't make him feel like the little boy that doesn't know what he's doing. Let him be the man. You know, how beautiful is that? And so, one massive thing that you can do is learn how to listen to a man, right? Because again, the feminine is about, let's evolve this idea together. Let's talk about this together. And come up with a solution to it together you know let's talk about it let's evolve it. the masculine is i'm sharing with you a piece of my identity i've gone inside i've thought about it i've looked at all the situations all the facts that i know and i've really come to this conclusion and i'm sharing this with you and it's representative of who i am and how i see the world right write that down it's important how the most part of who i am and how i see the world is what i'm sharing with you right now so when you challenge that you're not challenging the idea you're challenging his identity you're challenging who he is as a man as a human as a as a being hence why he feels he has to defend himself and you might be like well why is he defending himself you know he's defending himself because I'm, I'm not attacking him. I'm attacking the idea. We're talking, we're discussing a freaking idea. Like, God, why did you get so angry about it? Because you're attacking his identity. You're challenging his identity. You're not necessarily attacking it, but you're challenging his identity, right? Not just the idea. And so the way to listen to a man, and this is the reason why women feel, the feminine feels that the masculine is so shallow, is because it takes time to get to what he really means. When you ask him a question, and he's sitting there thinking about it. He's really going deep to find out about it. So don't ask him another question. Don't ask him anything else. Just let him sit there. Think about it. Mm, here we go. Mm, what is it that I mean? And then he'll come and share it with you. And as he's sharing it with you, he might stop. Don't talk. Don't ask questions. Nothing. Just sit and be present with him. <laughs> I'm thinking about how I feel when someone does this for me. It's amazing. And just listen, just sit there, be present, just looking and listening. And he's going to, at first, he's going to be like, uh, 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 because no one's ever done it, right? Everyone's trying to fight for the talking. And he's going to sit there and go, okay, she wants to hear more. So go to the next level deeper, right? It starts at that top level. Then he's going to go to the next level deeper. And then he's going to stop. 
And then wait, count to 30 if you have to, 20 or 30 seconds, just sit there and wait. And he's going to be like, okay, she wants to hear more. All right. He's going to go deeper again. And then stop, wait. And he's going to go deeper again. And when he's finished, he's going to turn to you and he's going to say, well, that's about all I've got to say about that. Oh my God. How do you know when he's done? When he tells you, I'm done. You know? And it, wouldn't that be beautiful to hear the depth of what he really means? Finding out that he's not just some shallow man, that he's actually got some depth to him. All you had to do was encourage that to come out. Encourage with silence. Encourage with sitting there, being present, asking the question, letting him think about it. Because he's going inside. He's finding which parts of his identity relate to this. And you might find this extremely difficult. And when, with the feminine energy to be able to sit there and just listen to it and not say anything. You might not agree with some of the stuff that he's saying, but do not, do not challenge it. Because you're challenging who he is as a man. But listen to it. And what you can gain from it is listening to see how he sees the world. Because by listening, he's saying things about who he is by his opinion on the subject, right? <sighs> I know that this is going to be difficult. I know this is going to be hard for you. But when you get to see, you're listening to learn. You're listening to understand how he sees the world, who he is as a man. You get to learn a piece about who he is. So don't challenge it. Don't, don't go back at it. Don't try and challenge the ideas. God, when it happens to me, it makes me cringe inside. It's, it's a form of emasculation, you know? And you might say, what, so you mean that I can never speak again, never challenge his ideas again? No, I'm not saying that at all, but it's sitting and giving the gift of allowing him to be the man, seeing how he sees the world and not necessarily challenging his eye and challenging the, who he is, but making it clear that you'd like to have a discussion about the idea and that you're talking about the idea and not about him. Because if you challenge it and you go, oh, that's ridiculous. Why would you think that? Then instantly he's going to go, ah, oh, she's attacking me. And he's going to have to defend himself. But if you say, hmm, yeah, that's really interesting how you see that. So what about if you saw it like this? Or just try and understand even more of how he sees it. If we come from a place of understanding in a relationship, if both sides want to understand the other, and you're not trying to tell them what you believe and tell them what's wrong and tell them what's right. How do you know what's wrong? How do you know what's right? You only know from your perspective, from the way you see the world. What about if you look at it from a place of, this is interesting, I get to learn how they see the world. Any person, any human in the world, you know, but in a, especially in a romantic relationship. If somebody says something you disagree with, what about if you tried to find out why? Why they think that way? Because once you find out why they think that way, you might realize that it's actually something you could either agree with or you can see why they think the way they think or you can influence them in another way. Oh. Yes, so please, this is super important as well. Write this down. This is super important. Come from a place of understanding. I want to understand you rather than a place of, I want to tell you how I think. And it will all change. Oh, Thank you. Thank you so much for allowing me to share this with you. I'd love to hear, what's the key takeaways that you've got from today? You know, write it down, send it to me an email. If you've got any questions, please send them to me. I'm going to create a little Facebook group for this webinar so that you can jump on there and put up some posts in there and I'll and then I can post back and everyone can get the value from it and see it. I may do it in video form or just a written form depending on how I get the time. But I really would love to answer your questions, hear what you think. Please give me feedback. Tell me what you want to know more about. And if you would love to have that relationship in your life and you would love to take this to another level and the understanding to another level, then please join me for Uncovering the Prince, Finding Your Prince, the four-hour workshop where we're going to go deep into all of this.
And if we get enough people on board, then I may even do a live event as a little bonus as well. We'll see what happens. But thank you for coming and spending this time with me. I see you. I love you. Thank you. You're such a blessing in my life. And that is the end of this piece, but only the beginning of everything for you to come in your relationship, in your life. Thank you for coming. Thank you for spending your time with me. Thank you for being present with me. Thank you for playing full out. I'm Garth Bruin, and I cannot wait to talk to you again.